So today, Dr. Scholz, we're talking about PSMA. Now, a lot of questions have come up because I think that most people think about PSMA in regards to metastatic activity and when you've already been diagnosed with metastatic disease, but I don't think a lot of people think about it in the newly diagnosed phase, or at least those questions are starting to come up. In the past, you know, couple years of PCR, I would actually say in the last decade, we have talked about 3T MRIs when it comes to prostate and getting a picture of it, getting targeted biopsies. And now people are kind of wondering, should I even get a 3T MRI? Is PSMA the new thing I should be looking at? Can you get a targeted biopsy with PSMA? So I thought today we can discuss those questions. So first of all, can you explain what a PSMA scan is? Now, it's a bit hard to explain what it is because it's so revolutionary. Uh, what we've used with scans in the past, CAT scans, bone scans, uh, MRIs, regular x-rays, is shadows on a scan and then the pattern would dictate whether we thought it was cancer or not. And it was pretty good, it was useful. PSMA PET scans are so unique because they only light up with prostate cancer. They're disease specific and beyond that they're also very sensitive. So it's always advantageous to be able to pick up things when they're still small uh, rather than the older scans where you needed a chunk of cancer, perhaps a half inch across, before they would say, oh yeah, there's a spot there. PSMA PET scans, therefore, are revolutionary on the level of their specificity. They're revolutionary on the level of their sensitivity to finding early stage disease. And of course, it's incredibly useful because it scans inside and outside the prostate throughout the whole body, and you also get information about where the disease is inside the prostate gland. So can you explain what 3T MRIs are? Now, I think even in community settings, 1.5 um, Tesla MRIs are still being used, so maybe explain that as well. Well, it's always been a challenge to image prostate cancer prior to PSMA PET scans because prostate cancer, being a somewhat low-grade malignancy, has a lot of similarities in the appearance to normal prostate tissue. So when you're doing a scan, you want the tumor to stand out from the background, but if the tumor is very similar to the background, it's hard to make that distinction. 3T MRIs have come along in the last 10 years uh, using various techniques to look at blood flow, to look at, uh, at the cellular structure, and make the cancer light up more clearly so we can see for the first time, first time being in the last 10 years, where the tumor is, how big it is, and to some degree, how aggressive it is. So if a patient is newly diagnosed, they have an elevated PSA and their doctor wants to send them to a biopsy, we have been talking about using 3T MRI to take a picture of it first or during the biopsy and get a targeted biopsy versus a random needle biopsy. One, to make sure the cancer is not missed. Two, to eliminate the need for excess needles if it's not needed. So can somebody get a targeted biopsy uh, targeted biopsy with a PSMA scan? In theory, they can. And we have had a couple of patients who had positive PSMA PET scans in their prostate, and it wasn't showing up on the MRI. So far, those have turned out to be non-cancerous. So PSMAs can occasionally have false positives. So it is feasible, but the methodology has not been worked out in any sort of a uh, specific way that you can say, I'm just going to order this up. Doctors that do targeted biopsies are called interventional radiologists. Uh, they do not only targeted biopsies of the prostate, but targeted biopsies of lung, liver, uh, lymph nodes, and other parts of the body. They can figure it out if they feel it's necessary to do it it can be done. I think a common assumption because of the fact that when we think of PSMA, we think we're looking for metastatic activity. Most people think that PSMAs are not approved in early stage disease and that they're only approved in late stage. Have you seen that to be the case? Well, Medicare started covering the cost of these scans, which are, they cost about $5,000. So it's only, you know, the expense can be a barrier to getting these scans for some people. It was a big step when Medicare in early 2022 started saying, we will cover these scans if you have a diagnosis of prostate cancer, whether it's early stage or late stage. The large private insurances like Blue Cross Blue Shield, as of the beginning of 2023, about a year later, has they have started to cover these scans, and so they're becoming available. There are other private insurances that are still reticent to cover these scans. Um, whether it be early stage or late stage. And uh, I think it's just an excuse. Insurance companies make money by not covering stuff. And uh, they have uh, used that excuse to sometimes withhold uh, coverage of the scans. Um, it's becoming less common now because the scans are, you know, undoubtedly the best available technology out there. 
Before I get to my next question, I just wanted to remind you that you can join our cause and help us get these videos out to people all around the world. You can do that at pcri.org forward slash donate. Now back to this video on PSMA. Where do you as a prostate oncologist with the advent of PSMA use 3T MRI versus PSMA or do you use both? Well, the sequence that we see in men with earlier stage prostate cancer, people have been getting PSA testing PSA, for whatever reason, sends a signal, maybe it's a little elevated, as to could there be a prostate cancer lurking in the background. That would in, almost invariably for us lead to ordering a three Tesla multiparametric MRI to see if there's a suspicious spot, a PIRADS4 or PIRADS5 lesion that would suggest the possibility of early stage prostate cancer. The next step for us typically is to arrange to get a targeted biopsy of that spot. For people who have the resources, uh, you could consider ordering a PSMA PET scan at that juncture because if the spot doesn't light up on PSMA, it's very, very unlikely to be cancer. And so that would save you from getting a biopsy. But insurance companies are not covering PSMA PET scans unless you first have a diagnosis of prostate cancer. And a diagnosis is something that comes from having had a biopsy. So the usual sequence still is to get an MRI, have a targeted biopsy, and if the targeted biopsy confirms that there's some grade seven or higher prostate cancer, then the PSMA PET scan would be covered by insurance, and to have a staging PSMA PET scan makes a lot of sense. Make sure that there's nothing spread outside the prostate, and also to make sure that the spot that was detected on MRI and was biopsied is the only spot that it, it confirms uh, and validates the thought that there's just an isolated lesion, which can be very useful in selecting therapy. A uh, person who has an isolated spot in the prostate can consider doing some sort of focal therapy rather than uh, treating the whole prostate. Many people to this day are still um, unaware of the fact that when people talk about treating prostate cancer, they're not talking about treating the spot in the prostate. They're talking about treating the whole prostate. If someone has surgery, the whole gland is removed. If someone has radiation, the whole gland is radiated. And it's been that way for many years because of a uh, lack of confidence that the spot being detected is the only spot. And for security, the whole gland has been, traditionally been treated. And that's still the case as of 2023. So when we have these new scans, MRIs, PSMA PET scans that can help us be confident that there's no cancer anywhere else in the prostate, uh, then the idea of focal therapy becomes more attractive, which is a way to reduce the chance of having uh, collateral damage and side effects from the treatment. So one of the most common scenarios that we've seen when it comes to PSMA is now that men go into radiation, a lot of physicians order hormone therapy for them, and sometimes it's up to anywhere from 18 to 24 months. And I've heard you talk about in other videos the concept of shortening the hormone therapy because you can see if there's any metastatic activity on these PSMA scans. So how do you handle those scenarios as men choose radiation? Traditionally, we've been very uncertain as to whether there's anything spread outside the prostate. That has changed now with PSMA PET scans. When we were uncertain, we would give hormone treatment as insurance against the possibility that there was early spread. As we know that hormone therapy, which circulates through the whole body, can kill off cancer cells throughout the body. It's a very effective treatment. But it does come at a, at a high price in terms of the side effects of uh, men being denied their access to testosterone. PSMA PET scans raise the question when they're all clear and they show no spread, can we back off on our recommendations? Traditionally, if someone has a Gleason 8, so-called high risk, uh, they would get 18 to 24 months of testosterone blockade as a matter of routine in conjunction with their radiation. That has been shown in clinical studies to result in a small but real improvement in 10-year survival rates because no doubt some of those men, before we had PSMA PET scans, had disease that was spread and we know when you get after it early that you're going to make a difference in the long term. But what about the men now that have PSMA PET scans showing there isn't any spread? Well, we know that the PET scans aren't perfect, uh, that they're probably only right maybe in four out of five cases. But if the hormone treatment can only reduce your risk of relapse by 50%, so let's say you've got an 80% assurance after a negative PSMA PET scan that there's no cancer spread, and you add 18 to 24 months of hormone therapy, you can cut the risk of relapse by 50%, so you'll go from an 80% cure rate to a 90% cure rate. That only means that one out of 10 men that you're giving this 18 to 24 months of treatment is going to benefit, and nine out of 10 are getting hormone therapy 
without any real benefit. That's something that needs to be shared with patients. Even though we don't have long-term clinical studies showing the safety of cutting back on hormone therapy, say from maybe 18 months to just a mere six months, it's certainly something that needs to be discussed in light of this new technology. Do you have patients say, you know, Dr. Scholz, I'm I would just rather not take the hormone therapy at all and just get another PSMA scan in six months to a year. We do, and I think there is some logic to that argument. One of the reasons that we've feared men foregoing hormone therapy is that if we didn't have a, a scan to detect spread at an early stage, that we're going to catch it at a much more advanced stage and lose those men to uncontrolled cancers that we wouldn't be able to rein in. But now with PSMA PET scans, if someone does go through curative radiation, and a year or two later, their PSA starts rising. Now we can get a PSMA PET scan and find where the problem is inside the, that individual's body and treat it with salvage radiation, possibly even cure it. That has never been available to us in the past. We didn't have a safety net like that uh, prior to the advent of these PSMA PET scans. So there's really two levels at which PSMA PET scans provide a barrier to people progressing into serious prostate cancer. First, in helping select the right treatment at the get-go, but also in diagnosing disease at an early stage if it comes back, giving the doctors an opportunity to even possibly cure those relapse cases. So let's say that a man chooses that. He's going to get radiation, he's going to forgo hormone therapy, and he's going to decide to get a PSMA scan later down the line. What would the PSA monitoring system kind of look like for him? How often does it need to be? How many doctor's visits? I think this is the same as we've traditionally recommended, that men, after going through definitive therapy, whether it's surgery or radiation, will get their PSA checked every three months for the first two years every six months for the subsequent three years, so you're out to five years, and then just annually after that. Interpreting PSAs after radiation is, is a little bit of an art form because if there's any advantage to surgery these days, and the disadvantages in my view always outweigh the advantages, but the one advantage with surgery, by clearing the decks of all prostate tissue, any PSA above 0.1 signals there's probably a problem. People that have had radiation, uh, their PSA may ho hover in the 0.2 to 0.4 range, and indefinitely and they're still cured. So it's not quite as clear cut, but now we know with PSAs in that range, we can find stuff with a PSMA PET scan. And then at the next level, we have patients that have had focal treatment where a large portion of the prostate is left untreated. And those people may be running PSAs of one to two indefinitely. So there's a lot more background noise from the untreated prostate. And this is where the PSMA PET scans and the MRIs shine in terms of finding any recurrent disease at an early stage. So you mentioned the word cured, and I know we've discussed this in other videos, but can you just real quick talk about the difference between what you consider a cure and what a patient, you know, we hear the word remission a lot too. So what are the definitions for you? So probably the best def definition of cure is what we call a durable remission. So remission is getting your PSA down to low stable levels for an extended period of time. But once you start to get out close to five years after treatment, the chances of that cancer coming back become very, very small. And maybe you could say, well, in one in a hundred cases or one in a thousand cases, there could be a delayed relapse. But even those relapses tend to be kind of indolent. If it took the cancer five years to show up, it's gonna be a slow growing cancer anyway. I think it's very fair to start talking about cures if people have gone five years with stable low PSAs. I think another concern I hear patients have is does PSMA work in every patient? Well, the answer is no, it doesn't. There are uh, perhaps 10% of cancers that don't make PSMA, and uh, this is something to be concerned about. If someone has a uh, high PSA, gets an MRI, they see a spot, they do a biopsy, they confirm on the biopsy that the patient has prostate cancer, get a PSMA PET scan, and nothing lights up say, well, that's good news, right? No cancer spread. But it should light up in the prostate where the cancer is. So if you have an individual where there's no PSMA uptake anywhere, including inside the prostate, then you have to ask yourself, is this an individual who has a uh, less common variant of prostate cancer that doesn't make PSMA? And that's certainly a possibility. Usual next step that we take is to order a, an older PET scan called an Aximan PET scan which uses a completely different uh, biochemical modality to detect the cancer. And that should light up in the prostate. And, it, uh, and of course, the point is you want to uh, show that there's no spread to the lymph nodes. So if you have a patient where in, they're in this 10%, where their tumor type is not producing that surface marker for PSMA, and they have to get an Aximan scan, is there ever a case where you would forego hormone therapy if they choose radiation? Or because PSMA doesn't work, 
with them, you know, we would just say, no, you need to go on short course hormone therapy. Well, the use of hormone treatment as an ancillary component of radiation treatment it needs to be individualized in 2023. I think the, the, the blanket statement that everyone who gets radiation should also get uh, hormone treatment really was based in, yes, the absence of scans in the past. It was also based in the fact that, that beam radiation has a somewhat diminished capacity to get full dose radiation into the prostate safely. And so you wanted to add a little hormone treatment to make sure that you truly eliminated the cancer in the prostate so nothing would come back. With the advent of better scans and uh, with the use of brachytherapy, which allows them to crank up the dose a little bit higher, brachytherapy is radioactive seed implants. The idea of routinely using hormone treatment every time you have radiation, I think is off the table now as of 2023. And even more so when we talk about people getting some sort of focal treatment, that uh, the idea of just eliminating the small tumor. The two arguments that I hear over and over in uh, newly diagnosed patients is one, I need to do surgery first so I can hold radiation as my backup plan. And that I think is outmoded because it's based on old fashioned radiation where people did have a lot of relapses. We don't see that anymore. The other one is that uh, if you're gonna do radiation, you have to have hormone treatment with the radiation. That generalization is incorrect in, in light of all the new developments that have come about. So today we talked about PSMA, and we talked about it in diagnosis, and we talked about it in early stage disease. PSMA is quite revolutionary. You know, we've only had it in the past couple years, but it's amazing to be able to see where prostate cancer may be in the body and where it may not be. And since, since it works in 90% of patients, it's good to know that you can use that image to determine what type of treatment plan you may want to go on, whether that's short course hormone therapy versus long term, maybe it's spot radiation versus a systemic therapy. It's a very important scan to have. And one point I would like to make is just because your doctor doesn't suggest a PSMA scan doesn't mean, number one, that it's not available to you and doesn't mean that it isn't necessary for your case. PSMA scans give you a huge picture and insight into what your body is dealing with when it comes to this disease. And it's important to advocate for yourself. So if you've been diagnosed with prostate cancer, most likely most insurances cover it. And if your doctor hasn't mentioned it to you, mention it to them. Talk to your medical team about your options. And just like choosing a treatment, you wanna choose even the modalities and the different systems that you use in defining how your treatment will be done. And PSMA is a huge part of that. If you have questions about your particular case, you can visit us at pcri.org forward slash helpline. We have people who are prostate cancer patients and they've been through these, this situation. They can answer a lot of your questions and give you information so that you have better contact and better outcomes with your medical team. Also, if you would like to donate, as I've mentioned before, we're a nonprofit and our goal is to get these videos out to people all around the world. You can join our cause by donating at pcri.org forward slash donate. Please remember, you're not alone. You're very important. We appreciate you. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video, and I hope you have a great week.